Well, guys, I don't know what the hell happened there, <laughs> but let's pull the boys back in. You know, what stinks is when that happens, it usually means I didn't, Marty, I'm sending an invite to you. Usually means that it, I'm going to lose the first half of the show. So seems fitting for a classic Wet Shavers Roundtable episode to happen. Marty, that invite went to you. Can you guys Facebook Marty and tell him that the in, he's been invited? And David, I'm inviting you now. We don't have much time left. Wait, can people see me? <laughs> okay, good. Okay, Rico, you are you seem to be on point, so you're getting the invite now too. Okay, you all have an invite. It's weird. Someone act. Okay, there we go. Tommy, who's Tommy? <laughs> the who? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so David and Marty, we're just waiting for you to hop back in. So, yeah, as I was saying, it would not be a classic Wet Shavers Roundtable if we didn't have some type of. Um, uh, technical difficulty technical glitch <laughs> yeah it's weird because it doesn't ever really happen on this platform this is a cool platform though it is really cool if you look at down below there's you know i can do polls i can do special offers yeah it's actually got anyway, too much going I want, on i wanted to say kudos to you douglas for for this <laughs> this is you were saying i'm on point you were on point with this this is fantastic like well it's one of my favorites you know it had to come back Whoever came up with this idea originally was a genius. Like I didn't think an open comb slant existed. And then when somebody told me, and I actually I have to give credit to Joe Rowe for getting the original Fazan. I, he uh, interpreted some German Ebays for me. And that's where I got mine was a German eBay uh, because I could, could not find any through the U S but I've got a huge crack going through the handle. I don't know if you can, yeah, I I don't I can't really see it, but they, you know there I've had some with slight cracks before too myself. Um, but the thing is, it's what's remarkable about that is that like that's it's eighty years old. <laughs> yes, and it has one yeah. tiny. You know, I I have metal razors of the same way that have a crack in it, or they're you know some type of deterioration. So when people are like, uh, you know, bake like it's brittle. Well, time is hard. I don't know if bake like it's yeah. brittle. Bake like's come a long way since back in the day. That's another interesting thing, yeah. too, is when the release does, I see people see, saying stuff like, oh, I'm going to test it to see if it's Bakelite. It's like, no, it's Bakelite. And the thing with tests is the tests that people usually talk about uh, are based off the oxidization of the patina that you would find on, on old Bakelite. Um, Not on new Bakelite. You have to wait at least six months at the earliest, maybe, to see some patina and test on that. But there are some tests where you can just clack the stuff together. If you – like Bakelite has – I know it sounds weird, but it has – its own unique sound. This is one of the like in the field antiquers test for. Yes, you hear that sound? Now, if you take plastic, yeah. two things that are made out of plastic and collect them together, they'll have a whole different sound. Uh, so there's that. There's also uh, you heated up the formaldehyde test. And yes. <laughs> yeah, this is Whoa. science, folks. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's all little stuff, all little tests like that. But the 404 test, which is a popular one when you're in the field, when you're in the antique shop, you would, uh, you know, Take some 404, put it on a Q-tip, and rub it on something Bakelite like this. And if it comes off a little amber or whatnot, that might be nicotine, it might be patina, but that usually is a good indicator that you're, you've are you got Bakelite. Uh, 
But uh, I get all types of bake with you. There's also the burning test, which you don't want to do. And, but, and, uh, and, and you don't want to do that in a store. <laughs> and, and let me say one thing, too. Unlike well, Rico, some of us appreciate nice quality boxes. And uh, the, the box, the stock that you used to pack those in was nice and oh. thick. You, I actually heard, I think I heard Rico when he was tearing. I heard him like kind of grimace because it was like it was really hard for him to tear. <laughs> exert, exert himself. But Amateur I was move, super, Rico. Amateur I was move. Super, I was super excited about this. <laughs> These save boxes in Shave World. We don't rip them up. But uh, yeah. yeah. I was like a tear, like like squirted out of my eye when I saw you turning on the box. I was like, I worked so hard on that box. I was but, trying uh, to like share my enthusiasm and excitement oh, with everybody. It, it came across, yeah. believe me. Yeah, it really, it really <laughs> did. Even way before that, it came across. You should have lit <laughs> a guitar on, on fire, at, you know, and start smashing it. Uh, that's the only thing that would have topped you tearing into the box. But uh, yeah, so the big light, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm glad to do that because there's so many great razors and designs from back in the day that just don't see the light of day. People are so obsessed with Gillette's in this in this community, at least in this country, anyways. But there's a whole other world out there of some classics that you will never see. You really have to dig for them. There's more besides Gillette, and there's a lot of designs that just they were great. They got it right the first time, but either Gillette put them out of business or circumstance put them out of business. But they just do need you, to be explored. Yes. Do any of you guys have Hoffritz? No, yes, I have the I have the Lutz, but not the Hoffritz. Yeah, see, I want to try a Lutz and I want to try a Hoffritz because I, I think Lutz. those are those are super cool. I can, uh, classic. We'll get together later. I'll send my Lutz off to you. Let you borrow. Lutz nice. used to be much yeah. cheaper. You could get them new in the new old stock for like I think twenty five yeah. bucks on eBay. I did, uh, but I'm not impressed with it. I don't really care for the slant. I like the yeah. National Four style handle, but I like the straight bar better than the slant. And I'm I seem to be in a minority on that. People really like the Lutz, but I'm. I think what made them popular is they were available, you know, but it's kind of yeah. like uh, the toggle. Like, the toggle does nothing for me. I don't like the design. I don't like anything about it. I think the reason why Gillette killed it when it did was because it just wasn't selling well. And it's just a poor design. I think it was just about the bottom, you know, the bottom line, how much money they were saving with that design. But I don't find it anything special. Huh. But I think it's the same thing with the Lutz. But don't, you know, that's, <laughs> that's just my opinion. I could be way off. Uh, to to yeah. me, what I find intriguing about the Lutz, obviously the history, um, the fact that it was my first ever new old stock razor. Um, but I like the fact that each side of the head has just a slight different um, blade exposure. So it's got different scallops on both sides and just subtle blade exposure change. So you can, it has that thinking back to when it was made, you know, in the thirties, that time it had like a built-in adjustability to me, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. I think uh, another razor would be epic to be remade would be the aristocrat. See, there you go, thinking Gillette again. And that brings me on to well, my I... next subject, which <laughs> is my, my, this is my feature this week. First of all, I wanted to cover this because we're all talking about it. But this is Theodent, ladies and gentlemen. This is like, this is. I do have to say, that is like the sexiest toothpaste I've ever seen in my yeah, life. I think it's chocolate, right? It's like Lady Godiva over here. It's like, but this is like the X pack of, of uh, toothpaste. And let's see. I have to tear open to open this box. But if you can see the tube, uh, Google this right now, folks. I'll go get. I'll go get. They the also tube. sell. Hold on. They sell one that's a uh, hundred dollar tube of of toothpaste as well. I mean, these guys. And you know, and the, and the whole chocolate theme. Let me tell you what that is. The whole chocolate theme is because instead of fluoride, they use renew is what or renew is what it's called. And it's derived. It's a compound. Okay, let's see. That occurs naturally in chocolate. You know, when people are like healthy chocolate. It's good for your teeth and all that jazz. That what they're talking. Yeah, there it is. There's the tube. Is this stuff is called it? Renew? Come Ugh. on. Sorry, my lid's kind of gross. And how much does that thing cost? How much does that toothpaste cost? Dude, it's, it's the Rolls Royce. It's like ten to twelve bucks. Twelve bucks. 12 bucks. bucks. Yeah. Fifty bucks. It's like twelve. 50 twelve. Bucks. Well, I'll sell you my used one for twenty five. But it's it's really it's it's great stuff. Uh, so that's and what I you use. Can do this with it. You can eat yeah. it. Yeah, you can eat it too. It, it, like it is, that's what pieces. it says in the packaging. Well, what I like it is, it, is it's not over the top minty. It's yeah. not like you know cold. You know all the other ones actually. when you taste it's it, pretty it's just sophisticated. over sweet. You know, it's very. I was super impressed with the packaging. I was like, wow, this is crazy toothpaste sold. Like, yeah. I stepped up. I did kind of what I think a lot of the <laughs> – this is crazy. We're talking about toothpaste. This it's the next big thing, the, man. I'm telling you. It's it's, the it next is big the next thing. big thing. 
It's the next rabbit got, hole. I got the sampler pack of Marvis from uh, Old Town Shaving, which I Rock totally smart. love, Marvis toothpaste. But Douglas claims this is even better. And I have to say, it is fantastic. I love this stuff. Well, not only is it, gonna, I mean, not only is it, you know, very sophisticated and fantastic. It's also just better for you than Marvis. Marvis, you know, it doesn't get, it's not on the shelves everywhere like Colgate is, but I mean, if you look at the ingredients, they really don't differ much from Colgate. You know what I mean? Still got some of the stuff in it that I can't pronounce uh, where this stuff is just, it's really well done. And there we go. Now we're getting to the pace. What is that? Uncle Harry. toothpaste. Yes. Uncle Harry. Yep. What Uncle is Harry's? this? It's a little salty. We've been getting the gourmet toothpaste around here. <laughs> yes, it is salty. It, it looks like clay. Because it's in there. Yeah. There's clay in I want to try this. It's a it's a little salty, but I got the cinnamon. But as long as you can handle the salt uh, taste where the theodent doesn't really have that saltiness to it, this does. And it's a little gritty. But yeah, this is the closest I've had to a post-dentist office type feel probably because that grittiness you know like when they really get in there with their polishing type deal yeah. this one does really really well yeah as you scrape enamel off your teeth with it <laughs> it's down home i've drank it's so much home. coffee there's no more enamel on my teeth yeah <laughs> i need to pick up some harry's again too but harry's i have a few different strange toothpaste i like just buying weird toothpaste i bought one that uh tastes like apples before it's all natural toothpaste and it really wasn't there's, that good just uh, i saw apples the guys from Q Brothers did a review of this stuff. It was like charcoal, and you have to be you do it like once a week, and it's like charcoal paste, and you have to be careful uh, with it because it will like stain your sink and stuff, and your your whole mouth will turn black. But it's supposed to be like really good for your teeth. Well, it's like funny that you bring those two things up, charcoal and the Q Brothers, because when I was in Chicago, I picked up a toothbrush from them uh, that the bristles have activated charcoal in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was using that. I want to get. Yeah, I want to get one of those. Yeah, it's but it, you know, it did it didn't last that long. I really don't, I didn't notice much of a difference. So uh, I don't know. I think it's just uh, yeah, got excited. But who knows? This is <laughs> we turned we turned our shaving conversation to. If any of you guys <laughs> yeah. are getting turned turned on out there, maybe just what do you mean? Let us know about toothpaste. I, don't well, know. I do want to show. I'm so getting. This is, this is what else I've been using this made week. in the USA. I, I, you know, I haven't even been able to feature any of my stuff that I've been using this week. Yeah, feature your stuff. Not that uh, impressive. Did you want to answer this question real quick? Uh, Steven was saying, will we see additional colors of your new Bakelite open comb slant? Ah, that's a good and question. It, and then he asked another question, and is there any plans for a single edge? No. Two no, part, I'm, two uh, everyone and their mother's done a single edge. Um is there plans for other colors? There was originally plans for a, a, a color. I wanted an amber. What am I looking at? Legos? I wanted an amber uh, uh, an amber and cream Bakelite razor. But the thing is, Bakelite's really not used for anything anymore except like parts, like in the, maybe industrial parts here and there, uh, not for anything decorative. So the colors are kind of limited. I'm trying to source some colors for uh, the manufacturer. But I'm I'm having a hard time doing that. So hopefully we will see some in the future because there are a lot of like cool designs I'd like to do with that, and I, there's Amber. a few other bake lights I'd like to release. But um, so that's that. But I do want to say this is coming soon. Any other bake light products in the funnel? This pay attention to that, is, not bake light. I you want to pay attention yeah, to bake lights. Well, what is this? This that? is, this is the prismatic. Awesome. I'll be releasing very soon. Whoa. And look how thin that is. But this, is this is yeah, digging that. Used it. this is based on the the uh, the razor by Laresh or, or Kirby Beard Co. Actually, uh, who branded Laresh razors back in the day in England. Um, yeah, the, the skull up top. So it's very similar to the DOC in that regard, where it has almost nice. reservoirs. But look at that shape, and you really get into like hard to reach places with it. But um, yeah, so this is. Based on a, a, a razor by Kirby Beard Co., which was manufactured originally by Laresh, which is pretty much like the Gillette of France. I mean, these, but I think the designs are so much more effective and efficient. And I don't think Laresh gets enough credit. I think they were 50 years ahead of Gillette. This, some claim, is the best razor design ever when it comes to exposure gap. Wow. Uh, and, and I'd have I'll to agree say, with them. <laughs> I I'll really do it. dig it. From my shave, it shaves similar to a 1918 type style, like the old type uh, Gillette head, because it's more of a flatter top. 
And so it kind of has yes. a similar angle like that. So if you're if you're if you like that style, just because he said it kind of looks like a DOC because of the scale thing, it shaves different then, but it, it yes. it's definitely a nice shaver. It wow. is. I, I mean, want one just, that's some, so like cool. the posts on the inside. I, I changed actually to pretty much match the DOC where I'm giving you the wide ones. And I, Marty didn't wash this before you. Yes, yeah, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, so that's the only difference really is the claps. Uh, there is, you know, the tabs do stick out the side, the blade tabs, but sort of, I mean, I, it's just, it's based on the original design. So, and I, I honestly, people moan about those things, but I like them for adjustment reasons if I need to. Uh, but you know, I also have a mustache, so I'm not going to get my nose anytime soon with that, but yeah, this will be out very soon, folks, hopefully by the end of September, but this is like my, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you gotta realize I've been dealing with this one for almost a year now i've known about this i've been dealing with this this is my new one right now my new uh focus so i can't wait until these drop sorry so that's what i've been really working i mean uh, focusing on for the last week with my shaves and whatnot is pretty much i'm immersed in like testing stuff out for for uh phoenix that's awesome yeah that's exciting. <laughs> it's exhausting ah you know what uh, joe borelli there we go he has uh, one of the prototypes too so uh joe's over there in the in the comments that's it christian five minutes is wanting to know what do the grooves do well you know honestly the scallop top it uh it's a very similar to the doc um where it's where the doc retains water and soap in the reservoirs to uh self-lubricate it's very similar uh water and soap as you're shaving go up over the top and whatever's left there drops back down. So it, it almost leaves like similar lines like the DOC. Can you does. buff with that thing like the DOC? Well, you, I guess you could, but I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> it's like this is this is this is more aggressive than DOC. Yeah. This okay. is far more aggressive than the DOC. But so it, that's what's going on with that. I don't know if the, if that really was put there for that reason or if it was just decorative, the scallop top. But I definitely see a difference. I see it does allow, uh, it does capture lather and water, and you will see that, see a difference in, uh, than using, like, say, a 1904, which I think the, the thinness of the cap is very close yeah. to. I, I, love, I love that. That's cool. Oh, this is, yeah, this is, it's one of my favorite things in the world right now. So I'm very excited yeah. to have, have that coming up. I think it. Hey guys, uh, I got everybody frozen again. How about you guys? Well, I just on. Uh, you're the only. You're the only, you're the only one frozen. <laughs> uh, I was froze too, but it, it just unfroze. I I was frozen for a second, but let it go, uh, it, let it go. But yeah, it's all about the blade gap, as Joe Barelli says. I'm really, and I'm glad that Joe got to try this out too. Uh, but yeah, again, a piece of history that you know we either lost through uh, Gillette, uh, you know, buying them or putting them out of business some other way. Or in this case, the Second World War. The Nazis bombed the factory in England. So uh, that's what happened. Dang with Nazis. Yep. You know, so they've ruined uh, everything. I hate Nazis. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're bringing it back, folks. We're, we're going back in time, bringing it back. And David is gone. And it's yes. four o'clock. So no, David got out. He got out of class early today. Uh, I'd like to say, let me just see if there's any quick questions down below. <laughs> when can we watch <laughs> on mobile sure. again? You can watch on mobile <laughs> in a replay. <laughs> On YouTube tomorrow, Jeeves. Uh, any other Bakelite products in the funnel? Yes, there are. Bakelite bristle brushes. <laughs> Bakelite toothpaste. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Bakelite, though, I do encourage all of you to do some research on Bakelite. It's some fascinating stuff. It's, it's a miracle polymer that really blows my mind more and more every day. Uh but Bakelite lathering bowls. I'm actually thinking about Bakelite uh, brush handles. So that's that would be you, awesome. Yeah, uh, because you can turn Bakelite, and you can buy rods, really cool rods, marble Bakelite rods from 75 years ago, and turn oh, them today. Wow. Yeah, so because a lot of this stuff, again, people want the patina and everything else, so they buy. I mean, this stuff is again when, when plastic showed up. Bakelite just shut down. And so, I mean, people have this stuff in storage, Bakelite rods, and they, they'll buy yeah. it today to make jewelry out of and so on and so forth. But, I mean, it's it's expensive. I found two, three inches in diameter, I think about seven inches high, 
and they wanted 400 something dollars for these but they were beautiful pieces of bakelite but i just like I, how wow. am i going to sell that brush you know how much want to sell that brush for you know probably get two out of it you know or four out of those two pieces i don't know or razor make it like, the ultra limited edition only oh only four in existence. You could and design you razors like a stainless steel out of a rod of Bakelite, too. That could be done. Uh, but again, that would be... Well, actually, it's softer material, so it wouldn't take much time. Or as much time as steel or aluminum. But I don't know. You know you're working with the Bakelite piece. wheels in his head are turning. They are turning, folks. <laughs> and thank you all who's purchased one this week. Uh, you're, you're aiding us in keeping a piece of history alive. Uh, but... We are now at the end of the show. Guys, do you have anything left to say before we leave them? Wanting Oops. more? Hopefully. I'm just I'm glad David's gone. And uh, oh my gosh, I'm not. But, uh, I'm really sad he's gone. I'm sad he is too. Uh, the only well, I had questions, but I mean, if you're going to end it, then not. Let's really go. What are your questions? What are you, what are your I, was, I was just going to point out uh, it was a train of thought. You're talking about Bakelite. I've got an old vintage amber handled schick injector mm -hmm. which i used it once when i first kind of it was like maybe my first three months into shaving or something and my technique sucked so i used it once cut myself up really bad and said that sucks put it threw it away or didn't throw it away but just it's been sitting on the shelf ever since and i was also using crappy blades yeah from like my local grocery store that happened to sh sell injector blades but somebody was telling me, uh, oh, man, what's uh, Jeff? Anyway, Jeff, a guy named Jeff. If Jeff's <laughs> watching, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting your last name. Uh, recommended some blades, and it's a guy's name. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. Jonathan. Anyway, if anybody, if anybody has Ted, recommendations Ted for Pella? injector. Ted Pella, that's it. Yeah. Ted Pella blades. So I don't know if anybody out there has used those and if they have, like maybe say they have and if they like them, but I'm kind of curious to get back into the old Schick injector style razors. I don't know if I'll like it or not. I'm really in love with double edge razors, but I don't know. I don't like the angle. The angle is, you don't I, like, the angle. I don't really like the angle of them. I, I had a similar experience like you. I find the blades are thicker, so it's a noticeable difference to me and the angle, but you know, because I have probably about 10 of them. I love them. I have all the different colored Bakelite handles, the amber, yeah. the blue, the cream. Uh, they're beautiful. Uh, but another thing is, like, they go through time, and when you get them, if you shake them, sometimes it's like they just don't not tight enough anymore to hold yeah. the blade true. I found that to be a problem. Uh, yeah, just having yeah. a good experience. But I just don't like – I really just don't like the angle of the, the Schick injector. And, I didn't like the one I had. I still have it, you know, on my face. I couldn't even with good blades. I couldn't get a good shave with it. But then I got the supply, or the you know the the new one that came out, the stainless steel one. Yeah, and I think shaved just fine. What I did find was the injector was like the most natural angle for shaving this thing for the longest time. So when I started shaving the head, that that became my favorite really really quick. Oh, because I remember still, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I I looked into designing one. Someone's asking if I'll design one of those. I I did back in the day. My original. Uh, straight razor design. And this is going back three years ago. Was a single edge uh, razor, and the thing about the single edge was it was going to take regular blades and injector blades. And I I drew oh, up the design and I showed it to two two people in the industry that are my friends, and both of them like ah, it's a bad idea. No one uses single edge anymore. You want to do that, you know? And uh, six months later, the mongoose came out. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked yes. up to these people, but so after that, it's like, and then just one after another, it's kind of like the slant, like, or it's kind of like anything else, like the brushes, Crown King brushes. I looked into that for such a long time. When I finally got my act together, right before I release them, everyone and their mother released the Plasson style knot and brush. Yeah. It's like I didn't even know they were doing that. Now it's with the slant. People are like another slant. It's like yeah, kinda. But I've been looking into, and you know, I've been working on this for a year and a half. Uh, and I think it's a little. This bit is different. not another kind of slant. This yeah, is a totally. I, I mean, different. It's, it's a different animal, but you hear that, and so it, with this, you know, the single edge. I think it's been done to to well, not to death. I mean, clearly people want them and they like them, but it's just like yeah. I'm not passionate enough about them. I'm just not a fan of them. So like I really can't get behind that. <laughs> the mon but you know, a lot of great ones out there. And I could be totally wrong, but I don't see anybody really talking about the mongoose anymore. Like. For a while, it was going crazy. Everybody sold mine was about a year ago. <laughs> Come October, will be a year since I sold mine. Yeah. But like Christian Levesque says, the aluminum, 
SEs, I love them. The thicker blade of the gem style. Those are. Uh, oh, yeah. And that's something else I got. I need to get into gym. Uh, I have a few gyms. I just do? haven't okay. used them. Okay. I was going say, if you didn't, when I sent you the other, you know, the Lutz, I'd send you a gem, but you already got some. Yeah. Yeah. I've got uh, Micromatic and I forget which ones. I got uh, two or three. The thing with those is up from- make sure you, if you're not going to use it again, and you probably already know this, but if you're not going to use it again the next day, remove the blade right after you use it. I Yeah, I always remove rust my blades. Inside there. It, it'll, it'll, I don't know what it is about single-edge blades, but they rust so fast. They just, they're just And it might be the the razor back, how it's crimped on there. It might like uh, I've had no just screw the water. integrity of the coating and let's water in there. I, something like that I suspect is going on because they always seem to rust faster than a DE blade. Um, so, yeah, I just dropped this in a glass of alcohol. Yeah. Oh, that my last thing. My last thing, yeah. uh, my last tip that I, I didn't really get a tip out there this week is people who are using pre-shaves. Um, you know, we, we always talk about pre-shave oil and pre-shave soaps and all that jazz, but we don't really talk about the application of it. And that's an important thing to cover here. Uh, use your non-dominant hand to apply the pre-shave product, whatever it is, rather than the one you're going to be holding the razor with. Because a lot of the time after yeah. the fact, you still got it on your hand. And it doesn't, it's oil and you're trying to get it off with water or whatnot. It's just, you know, so this hand, if you're right handed, this hand, if you're left handed, but uh, you'll thank me in the long run. <laughs> what else you got? Yeah, Jam and James says that's a good tip. That is a good tip. Actually, I, do, I make that mistake. I always end up just using a towel to try to get it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like uh, I, I never thought that deeply about it. But yes, I should start using left hand. But I do yeah. like pre-shave oils. Uh, I think we had this discussion once before the fact that if you use a pre-shave, it possibly could get into your brush. And especially if it's like a a boar brush or a badger brush, like an animal hair, it could sour or do something really gross. So I really, really rinse my brushes after I do that. And going back to an old tip you had of making your own brush cleaner, Mm -hmm. that stuff is awesome. It works. And I've been (laughs) cleaning all my brushes and it's it's kind of a sick thing, but it's it's a lot of fun. Well, it'll last forever. That will yeah. last you forever. I mean, if you bought all the products I showed in that video, you will be set for like five years when it comes to brush yeah. brush cleaning. Longer. You know, there's a lot of products. And to... I have to say, after you clean your brush, if you've never cleaned any of your brushes, even your synthetic ones, it's kind of crazy how some of them you might think they're fine, they're perfect. And after you clean them, they like bounce back to life. Sometimes you're like, better. holy crap, this is. Yeah, and you're like, this is a way better brush than I even yeah. thought it was. Because now so it's broken in your and brushes. super clean. You know, yeah, I highly recommend cleaning your brushes. <laughs> but I do that more often because I'm a big, I'm a big fan of pre-shave oils. Um, I know some people aren't, and I don't know. I've done tested depending on some pre-shaves. Some pre-shaves I don't really get any benefit using a pre-shave versus no pre-shave. But the ones I've been using lately. I feel like I'm getting a better shape with it. So, uh, yeah, whatever works for you is what it all comes down to. That is right, and that's true. Some uh, do affect the quality, especially this olive oil and that, as yeah, James is pointing out. And somehow he has put a link or something in there. Huh. I don't know what that. Uh, are single edge blades coated? Uh, so are. Yeah, they, they claim to be. <laughs> yeah, I, unless I, you're picking them up at the gas station, they yeah. should be if you're ordering, you know, uh, uh, razor, well, blades that are made specifically for razors or made by yeah. someone in the. For me, I get the gem stainless steel coated ones, and I've had no rusting issues at all. And yeah. Treat. I use treat, and I, I love the feel of them when I have to yeah, use them. I think them. those are carbon blades, if I remember correctly. Um, I think you're right. That, that'd probably be your case because those do rust a whole lot easier. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you, Jack. I, I, I'm a fan of the pre-shaped jelly too. A huge fan. And I think I used some today. It was either that or the ice. Right there. The ice vanilla ice song should kick in. <laughs> I'll put that in the really edit. Sweet. So yeah, since we lost the beginning of the show, I think we might have half a show today, uh, which is <laughs> very fun. So then we'll just go through this real quick. Since yeah, I'm exactly. Just... We're just covering what you've missed. <laughs> Where the Theo didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. 
It's actually really weird with the uh, screen being all split like this. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> so yeah, this is where we're at today, folks. I might also <laughs> show you one more, uh, one more little preview of something that's coming up. Oh yes, what is, this is it? Aluminum. This is our new handle. Uh, nice aluminum DOC that I'm we're currently working on. But this handle and is a tip. Actually, yes this, for this, aluminum. Oh yeah, don't put it, it in bar. Don't put it in barbicide. <laughs> it will turn black. Well, that's a way to color it. You're so, if you want to make it a black. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know. I this found is, that out the hard way cleaning vintage razors. So this will be eventually, you know, uh, anodized red. I think. I think we're gonna do just oh, red, nice. do, red, maybe a black bottom plate, a red top plate, but DOC aluminum style. This is a three and a half inch handle, and I also have a three. 0.25 inch handle as well because I know guys like the longer handles. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be like passivated first and then uh, it'll be colored and whatnot. But yeah, I'm really excited about that coming out. Um, if you want to, if you do soon. stick it in Barbicide though and you want to change it back, a little tip, and I don't know, somebody might disagree with this, but vinegar and water will clean that up rid of it what pickle juice or, yes that's a pickle juice. i used to work in a, a bakery and uh or no this was a yeah it was a bakery slash cafe and uh we would save the pickle juice that came in gallon buckets after the pickles were gone and use it to clean the copper pipes underneath the yes. sinks and whatnot and it'll polish them up real nice so pickle juice folks it's your best friend or at least it's a good friend or someone's friend <laughs> but uh Yes, yeah, so so we are running out of time. I know Marty has has limited time with us today, and I don't want to. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, folks, this has been a classic, as you can see, episode of the Wet Chairs Roundtable. This has been episode sixty-one. Uh, we've been uh, graced with Marty Pape's presence, as well as Rico's corners corner presence, as well. Uh, and we did have David with us. We had uh, the same old problems. I'm starting to wonder if these guys have something to do with any of the glitches we've ever had. So. <laughs> I have this first time I've ever used this. So. <laughs> yeah. So something happened. But thank you all for joining us again this week. Hopefully there'll be a replay of at least part of this show come tomorrow uh, for those of you who missed us live. But uh, we'll, we're going to have to do this again because this is actually a lot of fun and I, I miss these interactions. So, uh, guys, yeah. don't make any plans for next Saturday. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, let next, I, Actually, I have plans next week. It's my birthday next week, so I will be Birthday gone, edition. But... Perfect. Is a, uh, mine's uh, not too far right around the corner. Uh, well, happy birthday. You as well, brother. Yes. Oh, thanks, man. So thanks for joining us, folks, and we'll see you next week in episode 62 of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. I'm Douglas Smythe from Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, and I was joined by Rico of Rico's Corner. Thank you yeah. for having me. <laughs> Marty Pape, folks. Marty <laughs> Pape. I can't see anything. All I see is a half of your glasses. And so I couldn't your point. I was waiting. Yes, that would be me. And I have no corner. I'm just Marty Pape. Yeah, he's right. standing in the corner. Take care, <laughs> folks. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> okay. I hope that recorded.